Welcome to the Somme Vigil podcast series, which tells the story of the Battle of the Somme in the words of those who were there. I'm Simon Bendry, Director for UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. This series was commissioned by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport and developed in partnership with the First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme and Chrome Radio. It was first released to accompany the Somme 100 Vigil at Westminster Abbey, held through the night of the 30th of June and into the morning of the 1st of July 2016, to mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme. In this podcast, we hear Lieutenant General Sir Henry Rawlinson reflecting on lessons learned from the Battle of the Somme. The Battle of the Somme in 1916 was the longest British offensive on the Western Front during the First World War. There were moments of success, but they came at a price. British troops were volunteers, many of them soldiers in Kitchener's new armies. For Australians, New Zealanders and South Africans, this was their first experience of fighting on the Western Front, and the new tanks were unwieldy and unreliable. Lieutenant General Sir Henry Rawlinson was born in London in 1864. His father was a diplomat. Rawlinson was educated at Eton before going on to the Royal Military College Sandhurst. In 1916, he was appointed to command the 4th Army, reporting to General Haig, who held supreme British command at the Somme. After the offensive, in December 1916, Rawlinson wrote to Lord Derby, It was very good of you to send me a wire of congratulations, which I much appreciate. The battles of the 15th and the 25th of September at Flair Corselet and Morval were certainly very successful, more so than I dared to hope, but the weather was very kind to us. Nothing could have surpassed the vigour and dash displayed by all the New Zealanders, the 41st and 14th Divisions, all of Horn's 15th Corps, which formed my centre on the 15th but the attack of the 6th Division against the Quadrilateral was hung up, and they did not succeed in capturing it until the 18th. This made the task of the Guards' Division very difficult, and I fear their losses are heavy, but they did their jobs, as the Guards always do. The tanks, in certain instances, such as at Flair and Martin Puich, rendered very valuable service, but they failed to have that effect on the fighting which many of their strongest advocates expected. They laboured under very great difficulties. They had great difficulty in maintaining their direction, owing to their limited vision, and their very low speed over ground torn by shells was a very serious handicap. The outstanding fact which of all others is the most satisfactory, and which has been most marked during the Battle of the Somme, is the valour and tenacity of the infantry. They have fought with a determination which one had never dared hope for. It is in the new armies and amongst the Dominion troops that the fighting spirit has been most marked, and the successes gained by these troops, led by half-trained officers and in many cases only partially trained themselves, are most remarkable. When during the coming winter special attention has been given to further training, I have great hopes that they will, in 1917, establish a much greater moral and physical superiority over the enemy than they have been able to do up to the present. During the Battle of the Somme we have learnt many lessons and are continuing daily to benefit by experience. General Lord Rawlinson died in Delhi in 1925, aged 61. You have been listening to The Story of the Somme, a Chrome Radio production for the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, in partnership with UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. The producer was Katrina Oliphant. In the next podcast, Lance Sergeant Stuart Lang talks about playing the last post on a 1915 bugle during the vigil held in Westminster Abbey for the centenary of the Battle of the Somme on the 30th of June 2016.